Up next, we have what's referred to as wave scan, or sometimes it's even called grain scan synthesis. And you could view this method in two ways. One is just kind of a special effect you can get inside of a sampler. The other is when you go more extreme with things, it can become more like a technique, uh, granular or like micro sampling. It all depends on how you use it. And it's exactly what it sounds like. So I bring a sample in and I can play it back now. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So it's just the sample playing back. But what I can do is I can set up a loop and make it very, very short. And by making it short, we can create like a grain almost. <laughs> something like that, right? And now all I have to do is scan through this sample. And to do that, I can just use this loop start. Wonderful. 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 And I'm gonna bring back the end so that there's no sort of silence at the end of this after it goes through. And now to make this more of a synthesizer and less of just us stretching out an audio file, I can use some kind of a modulator to control this knob. So I could use something like an envelope. Wonderful. 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 So you can hear when you make it very uh, long with the attack, or if you make the loop really, really short, you have a wide variety of effects you can get. So this loop length is actually relative to what's already been set up. So it's already super small. By making this, it's going to make it even smaller. And then it gets more fun when we even turn the key tracking on. So just by setting some of these, um, uh, the amplitude envelope, and also then we just have this envelope that we can use for anything, including the loop start, you can hear how it's drastically changing the sound. The other thing we could use if we didn't want to use an envelope would be to go in here and use an LFO. So the LFO is actually going to go up and down, up and down. And if you noticed when I let go, when there was a release using the envelope, it actually, what it's doing is it's starting to play back through backwards. All right, and the LFO does that in a very obvious way. It gets to the end and it loops back around on itself. Um, in this program, this sampler clearly is not designed to do what I'm asking it to do. And so sometimes it doesn't always work, but um, for the most part, it should. If I bring this up, turn this off, bring down the speed. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. But one thing you can see is that it keeps trying to start it up here. So I need to adjust the phase to make sure that it starts right down there at the bottom. So I'm going to try to do that for you. There we go. And then again, when we turn things on, like the um, key tracking, That's pretty cool. And then if you want to make this more like um, a granular type deal, you can duplicate this and like slightly change settings on them or adjust where you're actually grabbing uh, spots from. So for example, I could bring this down. Let's solo it and let's change some of the things around here. Um, for example, this starting point, the ending point. So we could just the speed on this one, make it faster. Uh, 
up. There's only a certain point where it will still work. That's what's so annoying about this. So this is a technique that you can experiment on your own with, with your actual sampler, and yours may work a lot better than mine works for this technique. It's always a lot of fiddling, and to be honest, I never actually would use something like this to try to do a wave scan type um, of an instrument. I would use a dedicated synthesizer that uh, prides itself in being able to do that, which is what we're going to look at next. All right, now we're looking at a dedicated wave scan synthesizer. And this one is called the Travelizer. Some of you more familiar with Reactor may be wondering why I'm not showing you the Scanner XT. And that's just because that instrument is more of a hybrid. So I don't want you to get confused with what's really generating the sound in there. Oftentimes it's the oscillators that are generating most of the sound content and not the sample that you can scan through. But this one, this is what's getting our sound. It is the sample itself. And if I hit a note right now, it's just gonna play back forever. And so the way I can stop that is just by hitting this gate key here. So now my keyboard is acting more like the gate. I can click and it will stop. So we can turn it back on. So let's turn off most of the effects that are in here. I'm going to turn off this filter and this delay. I'm going to turn off this LFO. I'm going to turn off this LFO. And now you can see this one's dedicated to position. When it's on, it's skipping around in here. All right, you can see that like so. When it's off, we now have something more like uh, micro sampling going on. And I can move it around. And I can adjust the size of the grain by going up or down. If you want this instrument to actually pitch, and one thing I'm going to do is turn this off. If I want to pitch this, I can just turn on the MIDI option right here. Okay, let's go up a couple octaves. So it'd be kind of fun to turn on the position. can adjust the grain size to make it smaller. And there's just so much we can do with this instrument, right? And most of it is dedicated to what's happening here with our LFOs. So I don't want to turn on the pitch one again because the pitch one's the thing that's going to be jumping all over the place. Let's go back and turn these things off. And let's go back down. Let's find a spot. Let's mess around with this grain and resonator control. All right, so this is just going to impact how smooth or how choppy the grain sounds. And as you can hear in this example, it's not making the biggest difference. A lot of this is going to be based on what's happening down here with our modulator. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this one on. Uh, 
And so what I hope you're hearing is we don't have the MIDI pitch turned on here, but with this enabled and with the pitch turned on, I am able to play up and down the keyboard and it's kind of making a difference. It's trying to put this into tune. And it more or less works. So this is controlling decay from left to right and damping from top to bottom. So no damping, full damping, full blown. And this is definitely one of the controls that's just worth playing around with on your own. But I'm trying to show you how when we now turn this on and create this more of a wave scan instrument, we can get some really, really instrument uh, interesting sounds. So we can make it go really, really slow. See the way it's moving around, right? With the symmetry, we can adjust where we're going to have this start happening, how aggressive it's going to be moving around. And it's just worth messing around with like things like the symmetry control to adjust how exactly it's going to be bouncing around in here. You can see how when I change it, it, it determines which way it's moving. Then obviously I can adjust the amount, which is going from left to right. And it's going through the whole sample as compared to if I bring it back a little bit, it's going to stay in a smaller region here relative to where I have this set. So if I want to keep it in the middle, I can go here and make sure my amount is down low enough where it's not going to be bouncing around too much more. And then we can obviously increase the speed here, maybe a little more amount. We have an additional filter and delay. have more of an impact. Let's see what happens if we do turn the MIDI on. And again, I'm just kind of having fun playing with these controls, right? This doesn't take a genius to figure out how this works. It's more of being a kid and just sort of experimenting and uh, not... <laughs> not feeling like you need to do something right or wrong. There is no right or wrong answer. We have a really cool sound here, uh, thanks to our wave scanning that we've got going on. Let's put a little more inertia onto this thing. And jitter is definitely a great control because it's gonna be jittering around then additionally. Bring this up a little bit. And then when we turn on our pitch,
Make it really slow. Make it really extreme. 